What happened, though, is if you teach yourself how to wall jump in this game, if you really, like, force yourself to learn how to do it, what ends up happening is next time you play the game, if you wall jump enough to where it becomes second nature, the game changes out from under you. Just the order of operations that you're used to from your first couple of plays completely changes. And we're coming up on an item uh, in a couple of areas here that was my oh god moment. It was my moment where I realized that the whole game was different now and I really was going to have to start pushing the limits of what I could do with this game. Part of the limits involve rolling into a ball into lava, but you probably already knew that. That's one of the things I eventually did with the game is I wanted to know how many items I could get without fighting any bosses except for the bomb Torizo. You really can't skip the bomb Torizo. There's just nothing for it. You got to do the bomb Torizo. Uh, otherwise, you don't get bombs. And if you don't have bombs, you're not going anywhere. But one of the things is, like, if you skip Kraid, well, now you've got to do Norfair, this area of Norfair, with a constant heat drain because you don't have the Varius suit. Well, how does that work? That's something I had to teach myself. I had to teach myself how to do this jump. I had to teach myself how to do this jump. This jump here. Third try. Hashtag third try. That third try is pretty good. If I average three tries per trick in this whole Let's Play, I will be pretty happy, I think. Uh, but there is one thing in particular that, as far as I'm aware, I only have, like, one footnote that belongs to me in the history of this game. And it's not, it's not like a tremendous thing. I've never set a record. I've never been the big speedrun man. Uh, for me, let's get up here first. Get this reserve tank, thank you. So it, I showed you the mock ball trick that gets early super missiles. Part of why that trick exists is because somebody figured out you could mock ball. If that's the missile tank you thought I was going to forget, then you're out of the running. I'm sorry. Good guess, but no. But I sat down, and this was before I was part of any Super Metroid community, before I did any looking online or anything. But I, like, I wanted to know, like, how many items can you get without fighting an actual boss outside of the Bomb Torizo? Because you really can't skip the Bomb Torizo. I'm like, okay, well, in the base game, you have to fight Spore Spawn to get super missiles. I skipped Spore Spawn because I did that cool trick where I blew up the block that's in that little tunnel. But even that, that's a super missile block. You need super missiles to get in that way. So I downloaded a map of the game and I scoured the map looking for super missile tanks that you can conceivably reach before Spore Spawn. And I, I found the one up in Upper Brinstar. And like, okay, well, you need the speed booster for that, because there are those gates. But the gates are times. It would have been much better to tell this story in the area, but the story's longer than the room lasts, so. But the gates are kind of timed, and you'll see this again when we go to the ice beam area in a few minutes. But the gates are timed so that when you're going, when if you run at full speed, you'll clear the first one, but then the second one closes in front of you. And then there's a third gate beyond that. Which I think you can hear on that screen. You can hear it close, but you can't actually see it close from that point, I don't think. In any event. I, I, it's like, okay, this, this is probably my best bet. If I want to get some super missiles before Spore Spawn, so I can skip Spore Spawn, like, that's my best bet. What I came up with is running at full speed, you just barely can't make it through the second gate. But what I found out was if you duck right at the last pixel, you can move forward a couple more pixels because your hitbox is lower, which means the gate also has to be lower in order to block you out. And if you duck at just the right time, what happens is you fall in lava. No, what happens is the gate closes on top of your character sprite, and now you're inside it. But when you're inside a block in Super Metroid... The game just lets you... That's, no, this is the right way. The game lets you move through it correctly. Uh, this is actually not a glitch. This is just working as intended. You can see this if you destroy a destructible block in the game and then let it regrow on top of you. The game treats you as being inside that block, but you can move 
more or less normally. And the gates work the same way. If a gate closes down on top of you, you can move in the gate. And by doing that, it let me get through that second gate. And then I use the same trick to duck through the third gate. And that's all you have to do to get back there and get those super missiles. And I, was, I thought that was awesome. And I went onto the GameFAQs message board and I posted a ZSNES movie file. This wave beam, by the way, is the oh god moment. This is the moment. The first time I played the game after learning the wall jump, I kind of accidentally got to the wave beam a lot earlier than you're supposed to. And that's when I realized how much of this game I was going to have to relearn and how excited I was going to be to relearn it. So yeah, I went on back onto uh, on the game facts. That's the wrong way. And I said, hey, I managed to skip Spore Spawn. And this is how. And I posted that movie. And as far as I know, nobody had ever done that before. Nobody had done that particular thing before. Or at least nobody had gone online and shared what they learned. What happened, though, was somebody immediately said, this is a great practical use for the mock ball. The mock ball being a glitch that was already known at the time. That was, that's that weird keep your momentum as a ball glitch. If these are the missiles you thought I was going to miss, I'm sorry, but you're out of the running. You're out. And that's how, I mean, for a while, I was just, I maintained a presence in that community because it was just so fun. For a while, that's just how... The, the, how it all went like somebody would find a glitch and maybe it wasn't a useful glitch maybe it was just a graphical glitch maybe nobody knew what to do with it but then somebody else could figure out something that you could do with it a practical use for this thing and i didn't want to go in this door but it was open and i fell into it and now i'm going to leave and that's kind of glitch hunting in general to this day I also remember at that time, and remember, this is years before speedrunning, like modern speedrunning was a thing. Speedrunners nowadays kind of go hand in hand with glitch hunters because when new glitches and new skips are found, the speeds come down on the leaderboards. And most speedrunning communities that I'm privy to are super open about what they find and excited to share what they've learned and to compete with each other's times. And... You'll see this room here works the same way with the gates, but now I've got a speed booster. I can go straight through. Or I could have used a mock ball to get through. Would have also been fine. But at the time, back in 2001 or so, not all of that had congealed yet. So during my tenure on the Super Metroid uh, GameFAQ message boards, there were people that was like, hey, I know some trick or glitch about the game. Here's a screenshot of it happening, but I'm not going to tell anybody how to do it. I just, I want it to be my trick. And I want to be the one person who knows how to do it. And some of those tricks eventually just got rediscovered anyway. I think the uh, the murder beam glitch where you equip the plasma and spacer gun, which causes you to be able to reset the game. Uh it causes you to put the game world back into a state where none of the items or anything are picked up. It, I mean, it gets really complicated, and it's kind of outside the scope of my Let's Play to talk about it. But I think, if I'm remembering my, my history correctly, somebody had figured out how to do that and posted a glitch of them having, like, 500 missiles or something. And swearing up and down that, no, he didn't just edit the image. Actually, he did something in the game. And there were people that called him a liar. And there were people that begged him for the secret. But eventually, somebody figured out how to do that one particular glitch. And, yeah, it turns out you can reset the game while you're playing it and go collect all the items again. And you can get hundreds of super missiles. And you can get weird graphical glitches in your counters up there. And yeah, just good old times all around. But those people did exist. These oh, Bandersnatch. That that's not quite as prevalent nowadays as it was. I don't, I can't think of the last time I've heard of somebody being like, "Oh, I found a thing, but I'm not going to share how to do it." Ha <laughs> ha! This is me twirling my mustache. I don't have a mustache. I'm sorry. But yeah, that's my one kind of. Footnote in Super Metroid lore is, as far as I'm aware, I'm the first human being to actually skip fighting Spore Spawn. 
that I'm aware of. I want to just really <laughs> stress that part of it because I actually... It's such a simple thing, and I can't be the first person who's like, Hey, I wonder... I really don't want to waste the ammo here. Boom, got him. But as far as I was aware, the, that knowledge didn't exist until I, I shared it. And then somebody immediately found a better way to do it. And that got me more excited because now there's like a new trick that I can learn. And I can increase my knowledge in the game. So what I actually did back in the day was I compiled all the glitches that people were finding and playing with. All the fun we were having. And I put out the Super Metroid glitch fact. Which is way outdated for now. But that is still to this day my, te like, my, like my testament to I was there. I was there at a point in Metroid history. That's the most I can say for myself. It's probably on Game Facts to this day. You could almost certainly go find it if you really want to see it. It'd probably be very quaint by today's standards, but... Oh, I need to get these. <laughs> I went... I jumped over it to lay a power bomb before I realized I didn't have any power bombs. But now I have them. And the checklists, good. That's always the part of playing a game that I love that I've enjoyed. Going, play, going back to games that I love. I don't replay a lot of games, but the games that I do replay, I tend to replay a lot. <laughs> if you've watched one of the 40,000 times, I'm actually going to turn my ice beam off, I think. Because we're not going to need it until towards the end of the game. Um, yeah, if you've watched all the... Like, Final Fantasy randomizer and stuff that I play. Only got one of them, huh? The other one just did not want to hang. And you reach a point in the game where, like, this is a speedrunner question I see a lot of times. Somebody, like, will ask a speedrunner, hey, do you ever play this game casually? Like, a game that they're speedrunning, a game that they have a good time in, a game that they know inside and out, that they've kind of committed to memory, that they practice. The thing is, you don't have to be a speedrunner to reach this level, but you reach a point with a game where you can't play it casually. Like, you can't just rediscover the game for the first time. That's not how it works. Like, I'm about to do a couple of Shine Sparks to get over this lake up here. Even if I'm playing the game and for some reason I have the Grapple Beam by this point, I still do these Shine Sparks because it's just what I'm used to now. I can't not do it this way. We just have to get this run going. Ooh, I think that's too high. I think we're going to miss the missiles on the lake, but that's fine. We can get them later. I'm not going to miss him. Don't go down to the comments and be like, I'll bet that's the one he's going to miss. I'm not going to miss him at all. Everything's fine. We're just going to go fight Fantoon. That's all. We're just going to go fight Fantoon. And everything's going to be just great. And there is a little sadness to that, that you can't go back and rediscover a game that you've played once. You definitely want to do this room before Fantoon, by the way. Otherwise, all these spikes are turned on. The ship has power, and this room is just nasty. Mostly, though, I only feel that kind of ennui that sits in, like, oh, I can never play this game for the first time again. Uh, it's got to be like a like a puzzle game. It's got to be some, like a game that has unique interactions and puzzles. Uh, something like Return of the Obra Dinn which I loved tremendously, but you can only play that game for the first time once. It makes sense, obviously, like it sounds just like a truism, like you can only play a game the first time once, but you don't really notice how true it is until you play a game that you really, really loved that first playthrough. For me in Super Metroid, as much as I did love my first playthrough of it back in, back in 1994, 
I more enjoyed discovering it in as an adult in 2001 or so. And it being like the first game I actually tried to pick apart. There's a fast way to fight Fantoon, but I don't... I'm actually not practicing it. I don't actually know how hard it is. I like the safe way to do it. What I'm going to do is when he shows up, I'm going to try to hit him with two missiles and a super. And what that's going to do is it's going to put him into this attack pattern, which is very easy to avoid. and just gives me some breathing room. And I think I've got to do this cycle three times. And then... And only then will I have earned a sip of ice cold delicious Pepsi. I actually have more energy than I used. Well, I guess I'm, I'm going for a hundo run. I probably got more energy tanks than I usually do. I definitely have more supers because I usually don't pick up the spore spawn supers. So usually I'm coming in this fight with only like three supers. Whoops, wrong button. So it looks like I'm low on energy, it looks like I've got 180, but remember, I actually picked up two reserve tanks. So I've got some energy coming if Fantoon does school me, but I don't think he will. He's looking a uh, pretty dark orange there. So I think I got this, if you guys know what I mean. I hope everybody who watches my channel who's a gamer... I wonder if anybody watches my channel who's not a gamer. I mean, I guess it's not impossible. There are channels that I watch that are, of, like... That pertain to interests that I don't actually have. Ooh, that wasn't it. We're going to we're gonna get on this ride one more time. Uh, you've ever seen any of John Boy's sports videos? I don't like sports. I don't watch sports. I don't care about sports. But I watch all of his <laughs> sports videos. His uh, chart party and dork town and pretty good series. Just because they're fascinating. So I guess it's not impossible. There we go. Oh, he was one missile away. I wonder if I missed with one of my missiles earlier. I guess that's why they call them missiles. Because you miss with them. But more likely, if you're watching my channel at all, you're a gamer at least of some kind. And I hope that you have a game that's this special to you. Whatever it is. If it's Pokemon, that's fine. I've actually gotten really addicted. Nah, addicted is the wrong word. I've actually gotten... Even interested is probably the wrong word. I have watched... There, watched is probably the correct word in this context. I've watched uh, quite a lot of Pokemon challenge runs the past couple of weeks. Uh, a while ago, Pokemon Sword and or Shield came out, and it was the first Pokemon game that I actually purchased for myself. I enjoyed it for what it was. It's not my favorite game ever. I'm not going to start doing Pokemon runs. Uh, I did a whole blog right up. You can go on skibby.com and check out the Pokemon Sword Shield review if you really want to read all of my thoughts on the game. Spoilers, you probably don't. But I played Pokemon, and yeah, I like it. It was alright. I don't really see how it's, like, some folks, like, most special game ever. But to some people it is. And I've been watching some of their videos of their challenge runs... Of their, their Nuzlocks and their, uh, can I beat Pokemon with only a Bidoof kind of videos. There's a couple of guys that have, like, a core community around them that do these crazy challenge runs. I'm going to do a safety save here. Because this next room is awful. It's the spikes in this dungeon, this dungeon, in this air I guess it's a dungeon. I'm going to stick with dungeon. The spikes in this dungeon do so much damage, and this room has tons of spikes and is partially submerged, and I don't feel like backtracking for this, so we're going to do it now. So, I actually got, somebody taught me how to get through this room pretty easily. I think, if I'm doing this right, we're going to just run in. Run into the water. And for some reason, the weird water momentum gets you up and over. And then you're in this room. And this is where... Uh, that's not going to kill me. It is going to kill me. That's why I safety saved. 
It's why we safety saved. Exactly that reason. Shoutouts to Curtis Montgomery for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video and you want to see more, please tickle my thumb, leave a friendly comment, and ring my little bell.